YouTube, today I'm going to be making a Rockabilly Batman cow, complete with the goggles. This is based on concept art and also some cosplays I saw, I want to say starting back in 2008, one of my roommates showed it to me uh, when he was searching around for different things on uh, cosplays and Batman. And if you would have told me back then that I would have been making this today, I would have thought you were crazy. But the main reason I'm doing this is because I got a request a long time ago from Rockabilly Ragsdale to do this, and I've wanted to do this for a long time, and I'm glad, honestly, that I waited, because the original idea I had in my head and what came out here is quite a bit different, and this came out, honestly, better than what I thought. Uh, well, not than what I thought, but what I could have hoped. <laughs> what I expected it exceeded it. I wanted to put in kind of a squared-off front end here, like on a helmet, and I also wanted that little flare in the back as well, how it curves up and kind of bells out on the bottom. And I ended up achieving both. But initially, that was not in my design. Having this back end or this front end shape and basically combining the elements of a <clears throat> of a non-full-face motorcycle traditional helmet with a Batman cowl, I feel like worked out pretty well. And there's also some cool stuff at the end. Special surprise, so stick around for that. Rockabilly Rags, I hope you enjoy the video. And I also in hope uh, that you uh, are happy with the way that the cowl turned out and the look of it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right into the build. All right, first thing I've done is cut out the side and the top pieces for the shell. Uh, one of each for the left and the right. And the first thing I'm going to do is glue together the V-cuts here on each of these pieces and to glue these together I'm going to be using contact cement. I'm just use a brush, apply it to both sides, let it dry for 15 minutes and then stick them all together. Right now that I got my V-cuts together it pulls some natural curve into this section however into this back part and you'll notice it's curved too. That didn't happen as a consequence of gluing the V-cuts obviously. That was from me heating it and curving it and I also heated and curved this side as well and I heated all these pieces on the back side except for this one. This one I left flat so you'd have something to compare it to. You'll notice that I curved it right in through here where the jaw would be and I put a little curve right through here as well by heating on the back side and to heat this up I use a drill master heat gun and I will simply flip my piece over Apply some heat where I need the curve to be, and then I simply just use my hands to help curve and bend this into place. I'm doing some preheat forming on this because it will ultimately make it easier for me to glue all the rest of this together. Now, once I finish with my heat forming on this other piece, I'm going to apply contact cement to this edge and this edge so I can put this together here and then you'll notice this little edge sticking out here this edge you're going to line up with this edge here and you're going to apply contact cement along these seams here and here and all across here and you're going to glue all these together you'll notice this little bend right here this is about where your ear should stop but if you're a little confused as to how and where um, I am planning on putting hash marks on the patterns because I get a lot of complaints that I don't have them. I personally don't use them and will not ever use them in my videos. But if you're a person that likes them, bam, there you go. And then to get this back piece lined up, I'm going to attach at the bottom first and then match up here. And that's, I'm not putting any contact cement on the back side of this, at least not at first. And that will help line everything up. Okay, I have glued the two shells together. And before I glue both halves together, I want to reiterate again, I started by matching up this edge and gluing this, which will give it the slight overlap and that kind of mean, wicked looking curve right there. And line this up here and glue this to here. Then I start with the back piece, attaching it to the bottom and gluing it up to here. And like I say, right where you see that bend in the pattern shape is where you're going to have this gap between the ear. I'm actually going to cover this, although I feel like I shouldn't, because if this was made out of leather, uh, you, that probably would just stick up and wouldn't be covered. But you have the option to do both. You can leave it open, which will allow air to flow through and circulate to your head. And unless you're like extremely short or, you know, there's mirrors in the ceiling, nobody's going to see that there's a hole there. And you'll actually have some air flow. But before I glue these two halves together, 
I've already taken and cut and sanded this nose area at an angle. Okay, it's no longer flat. That way, whenever I glue the two together, it'll form that cool Batman point. And the other thing I'm going to do before I glue them together is some more pre-heat forming. Now, I left this one flat, but this one I've already heat formed so you can see the difference. Okay, I've put the angle in the nose here by simply folding it over so that it lines up on the bottom like that. And then I went back through and heated it and put a little bit of curvature here and here and a little bit more up through here and kind of pulled out a temple area. And you'll notice as well that I've heated the entire eye area here. And after heating that, I took it and pushed in the eye uh, area on the top, especially and on the bottom. And then on the top here, I used my finger to push up underneath on the back side of the foam once I heated it and push my fingers down with my left hand on the top to get an eyebrow shape pushed into this. Okay, so this is some of the preheat forming that I'm going to do prior to gluing these two together. Once I finish the heat forming on this side, we'll glue the two together and come back and see how that looks. Okay, so now that I have both sides together and all that good stuff, and I've tried it on to make sure it fits, it fits quite nicely. Uh, there's a little bit of space, so particularly in the back, a little bit of space between the mask and my head so that I can put a little bit of padding in it and still have it fit tight but have some airflow going through. Let's not focus on that now though because now it's time for some heat gun action. I've of course been gradually heating and shaping the pieces here as I stuck it together but now you'll notice where the seams are it's a little knobby a little lumpy particular where these are glued together. There's kind of lumps. I want to heat and round that out. And to aid in the process, I have a canvas mannequin head, which I have been informed in the comments is for hat making. Thank you. I'm sorry I don't remember your name right now as I'm doing this, but if you're watching this, props to you. But yes, I have the canvas mannequin head underneath this, which is quite sturdy. You could use uh, a softball, for example, heat the mask, uh, put the softball in one hand, stick it inside the mask, and use the other hand to press it round or anything large. That is not going to be flammable, I don't suggest, obviously, uh, styrofoam mannequin heads, the heat gun will melt it. But yeah, I'm going to go through and continue to heat and round all this out. And put a little bit more shape into the forehead and some of the other areas, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. So I have finished putting in the brow definition. I pushed this in here a bit. Rounded off the head here overall, so that... It's not quite as pointy. There is a little bit here, but I'm going to sand that down with my Dremel and by hand a little bit. So I'm not super worried about that. But the next pieces I'm going to put on before I start doing my Dremeling is going to be the uh, inside ear pieces. I have Nerf plastic all over this from sewing up a Nerf gun. But anyways, so this one, you'll notice the inside edges are at an extreme angle. I got this extreme angle by using my Dremel to sand it down. I did initially cut it angled, each piece opposite to one another, since this one is going to go inside on this ear, and this one with the angles this way is going to go on the inside of this ear. And whenever I glue them in, it's going to pull this into a curve whenever I match up the seams on either side. Okay, I got both pieces on, and then once I had the contact cement on, I started by matching up this side here first, starting from the top down, and then pressed in this, and it gave it a nice distinctive curve on both sides, which is pretty cool, because that matches up pretty well with the heat shaping I did to make it a little rounded out on the outside this way on both sides. So I'm pretty stoked on that. I was hoping it'd pull some in, but man, it's way more dramatic and way cooler looking than what I'd honestly hoped. I'm pretty psyched on that. So now I'm going to go, <coughs> excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and fire up the Dremel here and start sanding all this down.
So one of the first things I did was I trimmed these ends off by trying this on after I sanded it. Then I took some painter's tape and I masked off here because I just put a layer of black plastic up on here. As you can see it's still wet. I just apply it wet, thick, and even. Nothing to show or film there. Done it in a million other videos. But what I am going to show you next is once this dries, I'm going to come back with some white Plasti Dip and start to spray in the texture. And that should show up quite nicely, the white in contrast to the black. Ultimately, it's going to result in me either having to Plasti Dip it black at the end or paint it black, but whatever. Uh, it'll, be, it'll be a nice way to show up the texturing process on film. Okay, so like I said, I did first a layer of black Plasti Dip, and now I've done white. And I'm going to do multiple layers like this, where I just keep, you notice it's not a, a thick, wet layer. It's speckled and pebbled. And that is to give it kind of like a leather-like texture whenever I'm done. Granted, I'm going to have to go, have to, you know, go right back through and paint this black, which is an unnecessary step, quite frankly. But I wanted to show the contrast of on, on film of exactly how I do this to get the texture. I'm going to let this dry for a few hours, come back, and I'm just going to keep plying this Plasti Dip uh, rather uh, randomly speckled just like this all over it. Till, like I say, as it dries layer after layer, you'll get a nice pebbly texture that almost looks like leather. Alright, so here it is after layer four of the... Plasti Dip is kind of random, randomly splattering it on layer after layer. And of course now though I do have to go back through and paint this black. Which I'll do. And then I'll remove the masking and go ahead and put in my Velcro. So of course the next thing I feel that this needs is some goggles. So I came up with this goggle pattern and I had to cut six of these out of two millimeter foam until I got these two that looked the best. And even this top edge here I'm going to have to do, oh man, I have to do a little bit more trimming or some sanding. Oh my gosh, that would drive me crazy. Okay, and so I cut two of those out of two millimeter, and I cut two out of five. The five are much more rough because the five are going to go in the back. I'm going to apply contact cement to both sides, let it sit for 15 minutes. I'm going to lay the little plastic lens piece in between, and then this will be on top, which will cover up my ugly cut five. And that will form both of the goggles. Now, if you're wondering where I got this plastic, it's actually just from some scrap packaging plastic I had laying around from a Nerf gun. Uh, it would probably seem insane to most people to save this kind of stuff, but I totally do. I ended up using it for things like this. Uh, if you want something more rigid and durable, you could always use eighth inch thick plexiglass. Uh, cut it with a Dremel. And if you want, you can even heat heat that stuff with a heat gun and curve it, but you got to get it really hot, and you need to wear gloves if you're going to do that. However, the plexiglass and all that good stuff will make it heavier, which will put a little bit more weight and a little bit more strain on your EVA foam helmet. If you happen to turn around and make something like this out of leather, and something like that is going to last much longer, and then I would definitely suggest using the plexiglass, but it seems a little bit of overkill for this, and I want it to be nice and lightweight. Okay, so I have uh, my basic goggles done here. Now, I did use leather, and I did make a pattern for this. However, dependent upon how much you may tweak or shape your nose, how much of a point or lack of a point may change the size of that, but I wanted to get the general like gist 
of what I did. And you'll notice that when you glue these to the edges, they, sli they, they sit slightly angled. Each one does. And then I just used uh, a half inch strip of some leather that I got from scrap leather. Uh, leather's expensive. If you try to buy like just one sheet of it, it's like 30, 40 bucks. But you can usually get bags of scrap pieces. Then sometimes I get lucky and get larger ones, sometimes I don't. But I put this on uh, the actual clip on offset. So whenever it's clipped in the back, it's not directly in the center, it's actually off to the side. Uh, you don't have to do that. People may or may not like that. I don't know. I just thought it was an interesting uh, aesthetic and design choice. So the last thing I got to do before I try this on and show you guys how it looks with everything else, because I do have actually other things, other elements to cosplay to throw all together for this, is I'm going to put some Velcro in here, and I'm going to sand this down a bit with my Dremel. I've already removed my masking tape from both sides. You can see here it's still the white foam underneath. And I'm going to sand it down and put the scratchy... A hook part of the velcro here and I'm gonna have a piece of EVA foam coming off here with the soft piece facing down so that it can clasp together and I'll glue that on and come back and show you okay so I cut out a strip of three millimeter foam and I attached this strip with some super glue and on the opposite side I put my velcro and then I sanded this down a little bit so this wouldn't stick up so high, and now I have both sides that I can attach. Okay, so here is the finished cowl. Like I said, I did the best that I could to blend elements of, like, Batman cowl in with, like, an actual kind of motorcycle-shaped dome here on the front right here. And the swoop coming up in the back, kind of like a protective helmet would have. I feel like I did pretty good. Of course, you'll notice if you look at the original artwork that I referred to from the uh, Deviant Art is mostly where I found it. It was for Rebel Yell, a Batman, and there's a Rockabilly Catwoman, Batman, so on and so forth. I did change, obviously, the shape of the ears. I had them pointed more forward, and I also gave them the inner piece, and I feel like they would be more straight and probably wouldn't have this by the artwork, but that was just my own... Uh, choices in interpreting this concept. So hopefully, Rockabilly Ragsdale, you enjoyed this, but I thought, you know what, since I already have a leather jacket and so much other stuff, I might as well airbrush up a t-shirt and do some other stuff and throw together, last minute, full cosplay for this video. So stay tuned, because that'll be next. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. And uh, Rockabilly Ragsdale, I hope you enjoyed this video and how the cowl itself turned out. And the last second, basically closet clos uh, cosplay that I threw together, along with the shirt that I airbrushed. I didn't and don't have a pattern for what's on the shirt, so uh, that's not available. But I did just use uh, some blue painter's tape to mask out the design on the shirt once I found the center line and how, uh, where I wanted to start and where I wanted to stop on my body and marked that off. Uh, once I figured out, why well, I used chalk, once I figured all that out I just pieced it together with some blue painter's tape and came up with this design based on photos. And I don't think I mentioned the video but I did dry brush some flat gray uh, inexpensive acrylic craft paint onto the... Uh, outer part the actual frames of the lenses here on the goggles and I'm also probably gonna do another cow like this where I actually make ear covers and I don't have the scallop shape coming off the back here and I do a little bit less of a helmet shape up here on the forehead head on this edge right up here in the front uh, just to make a cool looking Batman cowl uh, I'm not gonna do a video on that though but you'll probably see pictures on Instagram because I've either given away or sold all of the Batman cows that I own now except for two and this is one of them so I do need to make another one for my main Batman cosplay so as always thank you everyone for watching if you enjoyed this video and you think it deserves it please leave a like as it does help out the channel a lot and if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it please subscribe and as always thank you all for watching and have a great day